All right, let's move further from here. The Israeli Prime, Prime Minister said on Monday that a date was set for an invasion of Rafah, and Rafah is the last refuge for Palestinian civilians displaced by the ongoing onslaught. Absolutely. Now, relentless bombardments have flattened their entire neighborhoods. Israel says it is also the last significant of, uh, area of the Hamas combat units. More than one million people are crammed into the southern city in desperate conditions, of course, something that we've been tracking for a while now. There's shortage of food, water and shelter here. Now, foreign governments and organizations have urged Israel against storming Rafah for fears of a bloodbath in Jerusalem, Netanyahu said, and I'm going to quote here, victory requires entry into Rafa and the elimination of the terrorist battalions there. It will happen. There is a date. However, he did not specify which date he's referring to. Hundreds of residents who had been living in tents in Rafa ventured back to their devastated home areas on Monday following the Israeli pullback. Some rode on donkey carts, rickshaws and open deck vehicles, while some just walked back. Palestinian medical officials said their teams had recovered more than 80 bodies from areas where the soldiers operated in the past months. Eid al-Fitr, the feast that ends Islam's fasting lunar month of Ramadan, is expected in Gaza on Wednesday, depending on a clear sighting of the moon. But there is little to cheer for Palestinians this year. Some hospitals have reported kids dying of malnutrition and starvation since last month and have warned of other preventable deaths because key supplies are lacking. Well, international pressure on Israel to let more aid into Gaza increased last week after airstrikes targeted a relief convoy and killed seven aid workers. In response to the pressure, Tel Aviv said it had approved the reopening of the areas crossing into northern Gaza and the temporary use of Ashdod port in South Israel. Israeli opposition leader Yair Lapid visited Washington for high-level talks as well. He said a deal to release hostages held in Gaza is difficult but doable. The former Prime Minister's Washington visit comes as Benjamin Netanyahu faces pressure at home and abroad. Fellow opposition politician Benny Gantz, who unlike Lapid, is part of Netanyahu's war cabinet, last week called for national elections to take place in September. Lapid asked about the call declined to speak about Israeli politics a while in the U.S. Well, I feel uncomfortable, if you excuse me, to discuss Israeli politics standing in front opposite the, the State Department. Uh, I will have enough time to do this in Israel if you'll come over and ask the question again. Nancy Pelosi, former House Speaker and a key Biden ally, signed a letter on Friday from dozens of congressional Democrats to President and Secretary of State Blinken. They urged a halt to weapons transfers to Israel. Support from Pelosi, a veteran member of Biden's Democratic Party, for stopping the transfer of weapons showed the view is increasingly becoming mainstream in the party.